Good evening. Welcome to worship. It's good to have um, you here this evening, those of you that braved the cold. So, no, I'm kidding. So, it was a, finally a beautiful day again. A couple of announcements to make. Also, welcome to all those that'll be jo- that are joining us online. A um, couple announcements is the Welka is collecting items for personal par- care kits. There's a table at the back of the sanctuary and a list of items needed, so keep that in mind. ALC Brotherhood is having their pancake and sausage feed on Wednesday, April 10th, 4.30 to 7 p.m. This is especially important if you don't want to cook. Um, it's also important to support the ministry of the ALC Brotherhood, so keep that in mind as well. You can still sponsor a lily for Easter Sunday. Forms are on the table in the back, and just let the office know by noon tomorrow, noon on Good Friday. So those of you that are procrastinators, the time has come. So keep that in mind. Um, please, adjo- um, please join your worship family on su- Easter Sunday morning. Um, atonement, we will have, Easter, we'll have Easter brunch on Sunday after service. Keep that in mind, and worship is at 9 a.m., followed by brunch. And Friends of Emmanuel, Easter breakfast will be 9 a.m. with worship at 10.30. So keep those in mind. Those are both full communion services. It's time again to make UJ care packages. If you would like to donate, pick up one of the white cards on the back table saying what item is needed. And UJ care items or cash for items need to be back to the church by April 14th. So keep those few things in mind. And our service tonight ends in silence, but then it also begins in silence on Good Friday. So this is like you get a twofer in two days. So we begin this evening with our um, observation of Monday, Thursday, and then we move into Good Friday tomorrow and worship tomorrow at 630 at Emmanuel and is at 630 again, and it will be a service of Tenebrae, so more reflective service with hymns. So please keep that in mind as well. I would invite those who are able to stand for our hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This, number 666.
Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sins and giving peace, the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. You may be seated as we make our confession to God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled, a penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them and repent of them and pray for your boundless mercy for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being, Give my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Hear the words of forgiveness. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ, Your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy God, source of all love, On the night of the betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the first year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year-old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb the same night. They shall eat it roasted over a fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall not let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. 
for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall ce celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. The psalm this evening is Psalm 116, and we will read it responsively. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Let us join together in singing our hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, number 656.
please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this Monday Thursday is from St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around him. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but you later will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not, only, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. This night is one of those nights for me that always feels a little bit in conflict on both sides. And this is because I know the full story. It's as when you're showing somebody a movie that you really love and they've never seen it before and you have to sit there and really try not to ruin it for them. You know what I mean? Because you're like, oh, watch this part. Or, oh, and they look at you and they finally say, Stop! Let me watch the movie. Okay. Okay. It is this night where we come to the table and there is joy at this table in being in receiving the body and the blood of Christ in the bread and the wine. And there is also coming to the table reminded that we are receiving the body and blood of Christ in the bread and the wine and knowing that that body has to be broken and it is broken for each and every one of us. There's both of these feelings and yet that also seems like what a meal should be about. We when we have a great how many of you are making a big dinner or going to a big dinner most likely on easter sunday right you know some of you have the ham already you know you've got it all figured out you've made your plan some of you are getting ready to do your baking you are figuring out how many people you have to feed i don't have to i'm going to my mom's i have to bring dessert (laughs) and so you're getting ready for this big celebration At the same time, if I asked you when a close friend or relative dies and you go to the house, what are you going to bring them? Food, right? You're going to bring them food. Not only that, 
when we gather in these rooms, when we gra gather to worship, not only to say our goodbyes, but also to celebrate the promise of Christ Jesus, it doesn't feel necessarily like we've had the end to the funeral. The end to the funeral really doesn't happen at the cemetery. It really feels more like it happens in the fellowship hall. When we gather around a table together and we comfort one another and it's this mix of tears and laughter at the same time. We tell stories about this person we loved and that we miss and we laugh and we cry at the same time. And I think that's kind of how it feels with Monday Thursday. It's this celebration, but not quite. And yet we will come to this table and we will receive this gift. And it is this gift of God in Christ Jesus. And it's not just a worship snack. It is really being fed the love of Jesus. And it becomes a part of us, literally becomes a part of us. And it involves every, every sense, every feeling. I am what they call a tactile learner, which means I am one of those people that if my hands are busy, my ears listen better. Okay? I am the people that fidget toys are made for. If you looked at my notes throughout high school and college and even part of seminary, you will see in the margins of every page where I'm making notes, drawings, not really, more like shapes and sketches and whatever I'm in the mood for at the time. Because I listen better when my hands are busy. I stopped writing on my paper when I learned to knit. All of a sudden, I was able to keep my hands busy. And so I could hear better. And really, that's one of those things within our language of faith when we come up to the bread and the wine is that I am able to touch Jesus, the body and the blood. For those of you that ha are people that are, receive memories in smell, which is the most, the, mo the sense that gives us the most memory is smell. And so when you smell the wine, that is you being taken to this place. And it's not just about a meal. It takes us back to every communion we've ever had and who we've had communion with. And it brings us those memories. We hear the word of God in which we the word made flesh, and we hear the word, and the word becomes alive in us in the bread and the wine. We touch, we taste, we see, we hear. All of those things in which Christ fills every sense to show us love at this table. And so we gather around a table. We gather around tables in celebrations and in mourning. And really, Holy Week is that kind of roller coaster. What did we do just four days ago? We waved palms. We said, Hosanna. And we are then reminded how quickly things can change as Jesus meets with his disciples and gives them what we call so often the last supper, the last meal with those whom he loves. But also it becomes a meal that Christ celebrates us week after week as often as we need it. We are given this meal and we come to the table. And when we come to the table, there are times when we come to the table full of joy going, yes, I'm receiving, 
And there are times that we come to the table feeling broken, and in that same receiving, we are given healing and forgiveness and new life. This is a meal of all occasions that invites every single person. My, I did not grow up remembering my father take communion. I didn't remember him ever taking communion. He didn't go up. And I didn't find out till, and all of a sudden we got a new pastor when I was about 12, 13 years old, and all of a sudden my dad started taking communion again. The pastor noticed that my dad didn't come up for communion and happened to talk to my dad about why don't you come up for communion. And that is when I've learned, so I want you to think about this now, so this is probably when my dad is in his 50s. In his 50s. And I discovered that he had not taken communion since he was 16 years old when he was confirmed. He was baptized that day, and he was confirmed that day, and then it was made abundantly clear to him by the church that he was not good enough to receive that meal. <laughs> Only in the day of forgiveness, and I don't know if the church actually made it, it like, I don't think the church actually said that. I'm guessing it came out more in action than word. You know how that happens sometimes? You're kind of given the impression like, oh, I'm not supposed to be up there. <laughs> so he never came up for communion. And all of a sudden, now my dad is now 92. And he all of a sudden became the first lay person to serve communion at my church. The man I'd never seen have communion for my, all my years of growing up, all of a sudden is up there serving communion. And what was more amazing is then talking to the pastor when I'm a pastor myself, and he said, do you know your dad was the first person in your, our congrega in your congregation, the congregation I grew up, to actually serve me communion? In the congregation I grew up, this is where you kind of get a little heritage lesson, okay? <laughs> I grew up with Norwegian Lutheran piety, which means I grew up with a pastor that kind of walked this far off the ground, okay? He, everybody thought he was kind of perfect. He wasn't. <laughs> um, I probably don't know if I knew that until I was actually going to be a pastor and I actually learned the truth, but... <laughs> Because I had troubles going, because I thought pastors were all these perfect people. And when you just feel this call to ministry, you go, oh, no, I can't do this. And people really were unsure if they were good enough to actually serve the pastor communion. And I don't know the whole con conversation, but I do know that my dad then becomes the first layperson to serve communion to the members of the church, and afterwards happens to look at the pastor and says, do you want me to serve you too? <laughs> I don't know what the pastor said to him, but it must have been a good one. To flip from feeling that you are not worthy to all of a sudden knowing that this meal is not about you, but it is about the love and forgiveness of Jesus. And so when we come to this table, we are reminded that not only we are served, but that Jesus also served Judas, the one who would betray him. Jesus serves each and every one of us, not because we are worthy, but because we are loved and forgiven and serves us and loves us. We come to this table, gathering sometimes in celebration, sometimes in mourning, but no matter what, when we leave this table, we are forgiven and we are given new life and love. This is a table of healing and new life. It is an on a night like this that we are reminded on Monday, Thursday, that Jesus also says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. 
And we see this love in the serving of the bread and the wine. And we see this love because the love is given to not just us, but to our neighbor. And then we are reminded that we are to share that love with each other in all different times and places. So come to this table knowing that you are always welcome, that you are always forgiven, that you are always healed. Come to this table whether you are in joy or whether you are in sorrow. Because this table is always here for you and it welcomes you no matter where you are. No matter where you are, Jesus says, come to this table. Come to this table and eat. Jesus shows his love to those disciples by washing his feet and feeding them, caring for them. And Jesus cares for all of you, all times and all places. Amen. You may remain seated and we'll join together in singing our hymn, We Come to the Hungry Feast, number 479. Those who are able to stand as we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in Jesus who gave us his life, for, gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer.
God who blesses the grain of the soil and the fruit of the vine, inspire us in us to re- inspire in us a reverent care for the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, whose greatest commandment is to love, guide all who govern by the principle of love, transform unjust human systems and oppress some from the gain of others, restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Especially this day, we pray for all those who are in the Holy Land, caught in the crossfire of war, those who are gathering around the table to receive the body and blood, but also in fear. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help all in pain to know that you are near, especially those who call on you for healing of body, mind, or spirit. Especially we lift before you Shirley, Dean, Marlon, and those who we lift in the altars, of, lift and place on the altars of our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who sits at the table with us, grant the joy of your presence to people celebrating First Communions today and to all who share the meal. Strengthen communities of faith in grace and courage. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who brings new life out of death, we pray and give thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of saints, especially Al, Kevin, Carol, and Sean. In our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. At Holy Communion, we are our crucified, we are with our crucified and risen Lord. We know that it was not only our ancestors, but we who were redeemed and brought forth from bondage to freedom, from mourning to feasting. We know that he was with them in the upper room, so our Lord is here with us now. Until the kingdom of God comes, let us celebrate this feast. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe, you bring forth bread from the earth. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine. Blessed be the God forever. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. On the night in which... Let me try that again. (laughs) On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Joined together around the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful God, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and so to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Please be seated. We are going to have one, um, one place of distribution, so we'll have you come down the side, and those over here, I'll just ask you to walk down and join them.
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the way we live, that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We, have, we will have the reading of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by, you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel, our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted you, rescued, and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh. They laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips. They shake their heads. Trust in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver you now. Let God rescue him if God is so, de so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. But not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Basham surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint, my heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a pot shared, my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the earth. Packs of dogs close in on me. A band of evildoers circle round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them for my clothing. They cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh, my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild bulls. You have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all of you, spring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. At the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. <laughs> 